Well, good morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos y todas. It's very good to be with you today, and it's especially good to be with our colleagues, uh, Secretary Barcina, uh, Secretary Juan Morostro, and my good friends as well and colleagues, uh, Secretary Armando, and of course, uh, Trade Representative Tai. Um, I'm also looking forward, uh, I must say, to um, Alicia to seeing you next week in Mexico um, to pursue our security dialogue. Um, before I get into what, we're, what we've been doing today, let me just take a moment to express uh, deep condolences on the passing of Senator Dianne Feinstein. Uh, I had the, the privilege of uh, serving in the Senate um, when Senator Feinstein was there. Um, had an opportunity uh, to, to travel with her, including uh, to uh, the Middle East. She was a trailblazer in American politics, um, an influential voice for strengthening U.S. national security and making it more inclusive, including through her leadership on the intelligence community. And she was a strong advocate, uh, as everyone here knows, for closer ties with Mexico, just over the, the border from the state that she loved and served so admirably for decades. We're meeting at uh, a moment of unprecedented momentum for the relationship between the United States and Mexico. If you look at last year, our bilateral trade hit a record $860 billion. Earlier this year, Mexico became the United States' largest trading partner. Our two countries have a shared vision <clears throat> for our economic future, one that's defined by fair competition, openness, transparency, measuring prosperity not only by how much countries grow, but by how many people share in that growth. Uh, as we discussed this morning, by creating the right incentives and in business environments and harnessing our two nations' respective strengths, we have a tremendous opportunity to make North America the most competitive, the most productive, the most dynamic region in the world. That's what this dialogue is fundamentally about. We're continuing to strengthen to expand and diversify supply chains and emerging industries like electric vehicles and semiconductors. Today, in fact, we're launching a joint semiconductor action plan to accelerate our integration, to scale our efforts, to attract new investment. Under President Biden's leadership, we're building regional clean energy technologies and semiconductor supply chains through the Inf Inflation Reduction Act and the Bipartisan Chips and Science Act that will drive our economies through this century. Mexico's overhauled one-stop shop website is providing prospective investors the tax and regulatory information that they need to take advantage of this landmark legislation. And we're taking steps to improve and strengthen even more our border coordination, like piloting a model port to streamline inspections and finding ways to reduce wait times, making it easier for people and goods to cross legally while strengthening our capacity to deal with fentanyl and other illegal narcotics. We're also addressing the root causes of regular migration by boosting economic opportunity. In southern Mexico, in northern Central America, our development agencies, USAID and AMICID, are supporting five, uh, excuse me, 50,000 students, farmers, and others with jobs, with training, with access to markets and capital. When people can make a living, when they have confidence in their economic security, when they can put food on the table for their kids, when they can build a future at home, that's exactly what they'll choose to do. And they're less likely to undertake the very dangerous and hazardous journey north. We're collaborating to ensure that workers on both sides of the border are prepared to succeed in the industries of the future. That includes partnerships like the one between Arizona State University and the National Technological Institute of Mexico, offering Mexican students an eight-week English for the semiconductor industry course. This work uh, on workforce development on skills is essential to our economic partnership and, again, to strengthening our joint competitiveness. Uh, when then-Vice President Biden launched this dialogue a decade ago, he said that the relationship between our countries and people, and I quote, was grounded in a common border, a common culture, common values, common dreams, common potential. That's why we launched this dialogue in 2021, or really relaunched it. And by further deepening our economic integration, I am confident that we'll continue to realize the extraordinary common potential that President Biden and then Vice President Biden pointed to. With that, Alicia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Sí. Bueno. 
Muy All buenas right. tardes. Very good afternoon to you. Tardes a todas, a todos, estimados Everyone. miembros de la prensa. Dear members Gracias por acompañarnos en esta tercera edición del diálogo económico de alto nivel México-Estados Unidos. Que es uno de los mecanismos que hemos establecido entre ambos países para volver más eficiente en nuestro diálogo y sobre todo para tener canales de comunicación en diferentes países. Tenemos communication otros, por supuesto, different areas. Obviously, we have others, of course, el, el the USMCA, y por supuesto, el diálogo que tendremos and la the dialogue that we will have next week on security, eh, drogas, migration, armas, synthetic drugs, weapons, el, la próxima this will semana be held en México. next week Pero creo que hoy in Mexico. Hemos logrado I think today, entender though, we have been able to understand the progress that we have made in strengthening our economic ties y, y sociales, yo diría, and social ties, and trade ties, I would say, between both countries. I would truly like to thank you, especially Blinken, Secretary Blinken, Gina Raimondo, Gina Raimondo Ambassador Tai. It has been an honor for me because this is my first meeting as Secretary of Foreign Affairs, and I'm very well and in very good company with Secretary Buenrostro, who manages all coordination of this high-level economic dialogue. I'm only going to mention a few issues. Of course, we have become the first trading partner of the United States, and that means many things. It means that there are responsibilities, commitments, and I would also say that there is a shared vision to create one of the most powerful areas, economically and socially speaking. Therefore, during this meeting, we discussed how we can build back together, how to promote social and economic development, especially in our case in southern Mexico, Central America, South America, because we know that we are receiving a large number of people at our borders, but we also need to find tools for future prosperity, and we need to invest in our people. I think one of the most interesting topics that we discussed today was specifically supply chains in our region, and especially semiconductors and conductors, with a very clear strategy for this region to become the most powerful region in production of semiconductors and conductors in the world, and therefore investments should be redirected towards these areas as our secretary will discuss. But one issue that we discussed here as well is how to strengthen our border infrastructure, and that is a huge issue. Why? Because in the trade between the U.S. and Mexico, we have lines of communication that are extremely important for the transportation of merchandise and people, and many other issues that I am going to discuss. Briefly, we have 60 ports of entry on our shared border, 23 land crossings, and 37 river crossings. We have made progress at this meeting. We have shown progress and talked about the infrastructure on both sides to discuss how we can bring our infrastructure up to speed so that we have better outcomes. Mexico is ready to complete OTAI 2, for example, in 2024, Mexicali 1, Calexico, Rio Colorado, Agua Prieta, and San Jerónimo. These are areas that are very important because it is truly where most of the goods and merchandise and people are coming in and out of both of our countries. Our National Customs Agency, for example, is supporting 1.7 million monthly operations between imports and exports, and there are over 20 million operations per year, supporting 84,000 importers and 817 border aid, or customs agents, and the issue is modernization. We need to make sure that 100% of our cargo that crosses the border is automated, and that is where we are working very closely in order to ease crossings, because if we are able to, according to the Atlantic Council, if we shave 10 minutes off border crossing times, that would bring in 3,000 additional jobs on six border states, Baja California, Sonora, Chihuahua, Coahuila, Nuevo León, and Tamaulipas. And this would also facilitate the entrance of $25 million of merchandise to the United States. I think that this modernization program on the border is extremely important. And there we are investing in Mexico this year. We have a budget approved of $15 million, $880 million, which will allow to do, among other things, increase our capacity to detect weapons and synthetic drugs. We know that this is, I would say, a 
very y que en realidad está resonando muy fuerte en la comunidad de Estados Unidos. Y yo quiero asegurarle, eh, secretario Blinken, y por, por su conducto al presidente Biden, que eh, tenemos instrucciones del presidente Andrés Manuel López Obrador de hacer todo lo que esté en nuestras manos para poder controlar el tráfico de drogas sintéticas y la cadena de suministro de su origen, ¿verdad? Los precursores de la entrada a México, el paso fronterizo, en fin, queremos realmente decirles y confirmarles nuestra disposición y compromiso para que este tránsito, digamos, para controlarlo, este, to drogas sintéticas, que duda cabe, drugs, armas, que es lo que weapons, para nosotros también es muy importante. Important y esa infraestructura well. creo que And nos I va a generar grandes beneficios, porque en el fondo lo que queremos es crear una frontera segura, us, we una want frontera que nos dé las garantías a la gente de que estamos haciendo bien las cosas. Y como usted dijo, y con eso well. voy a cerrar mi intervención, porque said, la parte más fuerte y económica la tiene la secretaria de la migración. La migración uh, es un tema migration que tiene profundas raíces económicas y sociales. Y por eso nosotros roots, hemos acordado irnos a las causas estructurales de la migración, pero también hemos visto que el problema de nuestras fronteras de México y Estados Unidos no nace ahí. The US, es decir, el, el, en border, verdad, las personas there. están really, llegando más bien desde el sur. South. Entonces tenemos que so, tener una mirada hemisférica, regional, para incluir desde Ecuador, Colombia, Panamá, Ecuador, Venezuela, Colombia, Haití, Panama, Haití, Honduras, Haití, Honduras, Haití, Guatemala, Honduras, Costa Rica. Guatemala, Costa Rica. Y por eso nuestro presidente And está tomando un gran liderazgo en esta materia. Y la próxima, y, y aquí, secretario And Blinken, here, lo hemos conversado. Blinken, eh, realmente eh, creo que ayer, además de esta reunión con ustedes, Tuvimos la ocasión de reunirnos con, eh, con el secretario Mayor, con la asesora presidencial Lee Sherwood, precisamente y con algunos de los representantes de estos países para hablar precisamente de acciones conjuntas para controlar este flujo migratorio, para ofrecer opciones de desarrollo y para evaluar vías regulares y seguras de movilidad. Esto es urgente porque la verdad es que sí hemos tenido una crisis que también nos afectó en los cruces fronterizos del comercio y por lo tanto tenemos tenemos que estar muy preparados para ello. Well. So y creo que well acá en Washington para mí ha sido una gran gusto porque he tenido la oportunidad de reunirme también con representantes del Senado y de la Cámara your, eh, de, de Representantes, House, House of Representatives, representatives para hablar de la relación bilateral y para de verdad tener una visión conjunta del legislativo, del ejecutivo, en donde podamos hablar de temas de seguridad, de migración, de desarrollo, de comercio, de tráfico de armas, de drogas, de tráfico de fentanil, The y desde luego decirles que ambos gobiernos estamos trabajando fuertemente para ir a las causas de origen, tanto USAID como AMEXID están uniendo esfuerzos para invertir. Nosotros estamos invirtiendo en Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, 150 millones de dólares, generando un beneficio para 54 mil familias. Eso ya es un avance. Estas 54 mil familias lo van a pensar dos o tres veces antes de que se decida de ir. Muchas gracias, secretario Lincoln. Estoy seguro. Secretary Blinken, I am sure that these meetings that we are holding between the U.S. and Mexico uh, are meetings of friends, partners, and therefore we will create and build an American community. Thank you very much. Secretary Guanajuato. ¿Se escucha? Bueno, buenas mm -hmm. tardes a todos. Pues sin duda decir que este diálogo de alto nivel fue un diálogo level muy productivo, dialogue was muy cordial very fruitful, y con very cordial, muchas expectativas hacia el futuro. And we have lots en of este momento hablábamos de que es el mejor momento de la we relación económica entre México y Estados Unidos. Los niveles comerciales de intercambio son los más altos our, en la historia. Com, Somos ya el primer socio comercial de Estados Unidos. La inversión ha crecido. Tenemos en México cifras históricas de inversión extranjera directa, donde la mayor parte de la inversión extranjera es de nuestros socios de Estados Unidos y también donde se está dando una mayor integración de las cadenas de suministro. Esto sin duda es un fortalecimiento y una integración de los gobiernos, pero también ha sido con mucho esfuerzo del sector privado. El día de ayer hubo reuniones también con el sector privado. 
yesterday we also met with the private México, sector en la primera vez que se coinciden en fechas un diálogo de alto nivel económico entre gobiernos como un diálogo entre el sector privado esto nos lleva a una integración a una hermandad que nos va a llevar seguramente a muy buenos resultados estamos trabajando juntos en convertir en América del Norte en un lugar de integración económica más importante para la relocalización e integración de las cadenas de suministro de varios sectores estratégicos y además para no tener tanta dependencia y garantizar la no irrupción de las cadenas de suministro. Entre ellos se encuentran la electromovilidad, la parte de energías limpias, dispositivos médicos y por supuesto uno de los más importantes que ocupó la reunión del día de hoy fue el tema de semiconductores, particularmente en el tema de semiconductores México y Estados Unidos estamos trabajando cómo complementarnos en esa tecnología para poder tener la cadena más fuerte en materia de semiconductores y optimizar todos los mercados de tecnologías de la información y comunicaciones. Para México es una gran oportunidad también porque para nosotros nos permite contar con mayores empleos y mejor remunerados. Trabajo especializado que va de la mano con el gran talento mexicano que existe. México tiene una cantidad de egresados ingenieros superior a la de Alemania, por ejemplo. Tenemos el doble de ingenieros egresados por año a Brasil, pero además nuestros ingenieros son de los mejores capacitados. Y esto se está fortaleciendo aún más con el trabajo conjunto con las universidades de Estados Unidos, pero también al interior del país para darles una y la industria para formalizar un currículum más apropiado para los nuevos sectores industriales que se están desarrollando. Sin duda, el día de hoy estamos celebrando una visión conjunta entre el presidente Andrés Manuel López Obrador y el presidente Biden, donde lo más importante siempre es la gente. Y todo este desarrollo económico y bienestar va a ser siempre manteniendo a nuestro pueblo en el centro del bienestar. Es un desarrollo económico por el bienestar de nuestros pueblos. Secretaria Thank you. Thank you and good afternoon. A special thank you to Secretary Blinken for hosting us for an excellent and important session. Uh, it's an honor to be here and a big warm welcome to Secretaries Buenrostro and Barcena for joining us uh, here in the United States. Um, I also want to add uh, my uh, note of sadness and gratitude to Senator Feinstein. Not only was she uh, a strong advocate for immigrants, but uh, was a pioneer and uh, somebody that many of us women in politics and public service looked up to for many years. She uh, paved the way for the rest of us and it is in fact a very, very great loss for our country. Um, as has been said, the U.S. and Mexico have an incredibly important, significant, and growing uh, trade relationships, one of the largest in the world. And the relationship, though, isn't just limited to trade, as important and as large as that is. The relationship includes strong historical, familial, and cultural ties. And I think we have to remember that as we celebrate 200 years of bilateral relationships, of our bilateral relationship, yes, let's lean into trade, and yes, let's expand that trade, but let's continue to work together uh, as neighbors and as longstanding partners. Two years ago, our governments reconvened the high-level economic dialogue, and I th it has been a very positive and productive engagement in that time. Our goal in this dialogue is to make it easier for our countries to trade, to invest, and to innovate. And by building regional prosperity, as has been said, we will help to develop diverse, high-skilled workforces and spur the next wave of economic growth and do it in a way that is inclusive so that all of the peoples of both of our countries have an opportunity to participate in the economic prosperity which we together will create. Um, as you have heard, today was an opportunity to both review the progress that we have made over the past couple of years, but even more important, to talk about where we go from here, the progress we will make together as we go forward. And one of the areas on which I am very focused is the area of semiconductor. 
Uh, we at the Commerce Department are hard at work implementing the Chips and Science Act, which of course will supercharge the U.S. semiconductor industry, creating hundreds of thousands of high-paying semiconductor jobs here in the United States. But it, there is a huge opportunity for Mexico uh, to also participate in the economic benefits of the supply chain. And so we are looking to use the HLED to figure out ways of better coordinating so that we realize the significant economic opportunities for Mexican workers and Mexican businesses, including small and medium-sized Mexican businesses. It just creates an opportunity for Mexico to be part of our efforts and incorporated into the efforts of building more resilient supply chains through partnering uh, with, with our allies and with, with our neighbor. So in the weeks and months ahead, we will continue our engagement with the private sector, with labor, uh, civil society, academic institutions, all of whom are essential to our success. And I think I can speak for all of us that uh, we have high hopes uh, for the high-level economic dialogue and the role that it will play in achieving this vision. And together, we will build a secure and prosperous North America that stands ready to tackle the challenges of the 21st century. So thank you, and thank you for hosting us. Thank you, Gina. Catherine. Thank you. Tony, is, there, is this on? Yes. OK, thank you. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for being here with us. As my colleagues noted, our relationship with Mexico is uh, special and important. We share, we share more than just a border. The sheer volume of our bilateral trade in goods and services really does speak for itself. More than $2 billion per day. Mexico is now our top trading partner, and we have an important trade agreement, the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, that has further deepened our ties. I also wanted to take a moment, uh, along with my colleagues, to pay homage uh, to um, the uh, great um, Senator Dianne Feinstein, uh, who was an enormous uh, supporter and champion of the U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement. And I also want to note that this has been a, a hard week for all of us as another great champion of our efforts in uh, renewing our trade ties and bringing a new approach to trade. Uh, Tom Conway, the president of the United Steelworkers Union, passed away earlier this week. So uh, it's been a hard week, but uh, a good week to remind ourselves of our champions uh, and to carry on their legacies. Our people. Uh, have a shared history and culture going back centuries. Last year, we celebrated 200 years of bilateral relations, and it is this human connection that distinguishes and reinforces our relationship. And this is why President Biden relaunched this dialogue in 2021, to work together so that our people enjoy greater prosperity and a greater quality of life. Trade plays such an important role in our pursuit of this vision. Investing in our people and our workers is a top priority for our administration and a key pillar of our worker-centered trade policy. This new approach is especially important as both of our countries continue to navigate an ever-changing global economy marked by a worsening climate crisis, geopolitical tensions that are rising, food insecurity, and growing inequality. And together with Mexico, we are working to mitigate the risk of future supply chain disruptions. For example, we're standing up a mechanism under the USMCA to ensure cooperation during trade flow disruptions that happen during crises and emergencies. And we are leveraging our trade relationship to lift up all workers and to drive a race to the top in North America, in line with our vision under pillar four of this dialogue, investing in our people. Separately, through the USMCA, USTR is working closely with the government of Mexico to ensure that the rights of workers to freedom of association and collective bargaining are being upheld. Just over the past year, we've secured wins for workers at several different facilities in Mexico, new collective bargaining agreements, major salary increases, safer working conditions. This is having a real impact on working people's lives on both sides of the border. Our agreement is working in so many other ways, too. We're collaborating on workforce development to equip our people, especially our women, our youth, and underserved communities to boost their success in a new era. We're working together on important environmental issues, and we're empowering small businesses and entrepreneurs to fully benefit from the USMCA. Just last week, we joined our partners in Mexico City for the second USMCA Small Business Dialogue. 
At the same time, there is a lot more we know that we must and can do together. I want to close on the importance of stakeholder engagement. The success of our work under the dialogue will depend on who gets a seat at the table because policies and initiatives should not be carried out in a vacuum or reflect the views of only a select group. So I'm going to conclude my remarks where I started them with a focus on our people. We must hear directly from them, especially those from historically underserved and underrepresented communities in Mexico and in the United States. Not only must they have a seat at the table, their voices must help shape our work going forward. And I'll quote President Biden uh, from the United Nations earlier this month when he said that we must live up to the promises we have made to ourselves, to each other, and to the most vulnerable, and to all those who will inherit the world we create. I look forward to our continued work with all of my colleagues here and with our stakeholders. Thank you very much. Thank you. The first question today goes to James Longman with ABC News. Thank you very much. Uh, the State Department has already said, Secretary Blinken, that the shutdown threatens to threatens the United States reputation around the world. Uh, my question is, would you accept a deal which did not include aid for Ukraine? And a second question, the United States provides hundreds of millions of dollars in aid to Uganda. And this is a country that has just passed one of the harshest anti-gay laws in the world. President Biden has already condemned it. You've put sanctions on various individuals on their ability to travel. But I'm wondering what material response the administration is planning and when we can expect that. Great. Thanks very much. Uh, let me take the second part first. Um, we have, as you know, consistently expressed very deep concerns about the Anti-Homosexuality Act that was signed into law earlier this year. It infringes very clearly on the human rights of Ugandan citizens, of journalists, excuse me, of, of, of its citizens. It jeopardizes progress in the fight against HIV AIDS. Uh, Uganda has been, for so many years, an excellent partner in that very fight. Um, jeopardizing it makes no sense. Uh, we're concerned, of course, that the community itself could be further marginalized and uh, decades of gains could be lost. And that would be, in and of itself, uh, a human tragedy. Um, when the law passed, going back to May, uh, President Biden directed the government to evaluate all aspects of our engagement with Uganda, including our foreign assistance, uh, including our investments, including the application of sanctions. That process is ongoing. And when I have any news for you on that front, we will, of course, will share it. Um, when it comes to possible government shutdown, I would just say this. Um, first, we hope it doesn't happen. Uh, from the sector of the State Department, we're very focused on making sure that no matter what happens, uh, we can focus our resources on uh, advancing and protecting the national security, uh, and of course, uh, making sure that we can carry out the functions necessary to do that, to protect human life, uh, property, uh, and security. Um, our work would clearly be affected. Uh, by this. It would make it harder to do everything that uh, we do to try to advance national security. Uh, so we urge Congress not to take this step. I'm not going to comment on the specifics of possible legislative arrangements. Uh, that is uh, up to, to members of, of Congress. Uh, but I can just say as a general proposition that um, the shutdown shouldn't happen. Uh, but if it does, we will take every possible step to make sure that at the very least we're carrying out our functions to uh, protect national security. For the next question, Ariel Matsatsos with Televisa. Thank you, Matt. Uh, good morning. I have a question for Secretary Blinken and, and also for the uh, Minister uh, Alicia Barcena. Secretary Blinken, Attorney General Garland said recently that there are diplomatic talks with Mexico regarding the extradition of the other three chapitos, the brothers of Ovidio Guzman. How are those talks going? Uh, has their extradition been formally requested? And what are your expectations regarding a timeline for that since they are not yet under arrest? And then my question for uh, Foreign Minister Alicia Barcena in Spanish, if you don't mind. 
El Departamento de Estado, the State Department, hizo público Madam Secretary, hace unos días made it public a few days ago that the U.S. is going to radically expand its operations in Mexico against Ventadil and restructure its staff, agentes. including new agents. Es esto algo que México y Estados Unidos is this something that the U.S. and Mexico ya, talked about and agreed caso, upon si already? And if so, then has adding gracias, new you. agents been approved and how many? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your question. I'm afraid, though, I'm going to disappoint you because I have to refer you to the Department of Justice when it comes to uh, extradition matters. Sí, bueno, gracias por su pregunta. Yes, thank you for your question. En general, los agentes Generally speaking, de foreign security agents por el grupo are authorized by the high-level security group that was created in the national security law. These are a joint decisions that are made based on respect for sovereignty eh, and reciprocity. These issues specifically are discussed in our security cabinet, coordinated by Rosicela Rodriguez, who would be the right person to give you a specific answer to your question. For the next question, Edward Ribas with FA. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Secretary Blinken, uh, I would like to ask if in yesterday meetings with the foreign minister from India, uh, you raised concerns about this crisis with Canada, and if you urge India to collaborate with Canada in the investigation of, of this uh, assassination. Secondly, for uh, Ambassador Tai and Secretary Buenrostro, uh, did you address the trade dispute over the Mexican corn? Uh, when do you expect the issue to be resolved and when? Y finalmente, si me permite la and finally, if uh, the vimos ayer que Minister of Foreign Affairs will allow me, we saw yesterday that the few Republicans Mexico would like to condition funds to Mexico on the fight against fentanyl. Is this a concern for you? Are you worried that in some way cooperation between both countries might become complicated during the uh, campaign? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as uh, I've said before and other colleagues have said before, we're very concerned about the allegations that have been raised uh, by Canada, uh, by Prime Minister Trudeau. Uh, we have been uh, in close contact with Canada uh, about that, and uh, at the same time, we have engaged with um, the Indian government and uh, urged them to uh, work with Canada on an investigation. Uh, and I had the opportunity to um, uh, do so again in my meeting yesterday with uh, Foreign Minister Aishankar. Uh, those responsible uh, need to be held accountable, and uh, we uh, uh, hope that our uh, friends in both uh, Canada and uh, India will work together to resolve this matter. Um, Catherine? Yes, on the uh, the corn issue, um, Secretary Buenrostra and I had a bilateral yesterday where we covered many issues. Uh, we did not cover corn, however, and that's not because it's not important, but it's because we're at the point in our conversations where we've handed the issue over to our lawyers. Uh, so in terms of timing, you can take a look at the USMCA procedures. I think it will be a number of months before we expect a, a response, but uh, there are a clear set of procedures that are set out and uh, our teams are uh, participating on both sides. Como lo comenta la secretaria Tai, para resolver una controversia ya hay mecanismos preestablecidos, es un procedimiento, hay plazos determinados, inicia con la, inst la instalación de un panel que es el que va a resolver y concluye con la resolución final. Y en este momento estamos en la conformación del panel y para mediados de marzo más o menos, con los, con, considerando los tiempos legales, podemos estar teniendo una resolución final. Ya ahorita es nada más trabajo de los panelistas right y los abogados hasta obtener el resultado final. To, en final pregunta, eh, hemos seguido con mucho cuidado el debate que se está dando en, en torno a este tema. Sabemos que hay esta, esta, digamos, esto que han dicho algunos republicanos. No creemos que pase finalmente, pero lo que sí nos interesa es que eh, la comunidad de Estados Unidos sepa que México tiene un gran compromiso por apoyar en el combate al tráfico de drogas y fundamentalmente fentanil. Yo creo que eso es lo que más me interesa transmitir, que estamos muy interesados en colaborar, en cooperar, en hacer todo lo que esté a nuestro alcance para controlar todo lo que es la cadena de valor 
to control the productive illegal chain illicit productive chain of illicits and fentanyl. And the final question goes to Jesus Esquivel with Proceso. Gracias. Uh, Thank you. Secretary Blinken. Secretary Blinken. Uh, le voy a hacer la en I will pose my question in Spanish. Eh, México, Estados específicos están padeciendo gran violencia. Certain donde Mexican states are mexicano suffering la minimiza, great y me refiero violence, al caso de Chiapas, a de Guerrero y Zacatecas, respectivamente. And I am about Chiapas, Hubo asesinatos Zacatecas, incluso Guerrero. de jóvenes. Y have been el presidente de México ha dicho que simplemente fue un día difícil. La pregunta que le quiero hacer a usted it was es a cómo va a ser la day. reunión del diálogo de alto I nivel. Wondering what si you can tell us about the high-level dialogue de esta meeting por el alto consumo de fentanil en Estados Unidos el tráfico de armas, with its co-shared responsibility given the high levels of fentanyl consumption here and what has to do with the guns that come into our country. Si Are you México willing to provide greater support? Are you going to introduce initiatives to that effect, taking into account the high levels of violence in the country and which you recognize through the alerts of the US Embassy in Mexico? And my question Barcena for Secretary Barcena has to do with migration. News agencies in the U.S. have reported a new agreement, which has not been clarified by either government. It is said that one of the agreed upon points is that Mexico will undertake immediate deportations of migrants to third countries. Could you give us some clarity on this? Could you say yes or no? Y por último, usted acaba de destacar el programa de USAID como parte de la cooperación México-Estados Unidos. El presidente López Obrador siempre lo ha calificado como una herramienta de intervención de Estados Unidos. ¿Difiere usted con el presidente en ese sentido o por qué lo está aplaudiendo? Gracias. Gracias mucho por la pregunta. Esta es a shared challenge and a shared responsibility for the United States and Mexico. Uh, fentanyl coming into the United States is the number one killer of Americans aged 18 to 49. So it is for us a national priority. But it's a, cri a priority across the entire spectrum of action that we need to take. And that starts with uh, working to reduce demand, working to increase treatment, uh, making sure uh, that people can get uh, can get help uh, when uh, when they need it, and we're making very massive efforts to do that in the, in this country, including with uh, public information campaigns, um, and including with actions that are taking place at a community level, at a state level, uh, and at a national level. But we also have to be acting across, as I said, the entire spectrum. Uh, that includes at our border. That includes with our close partner, Mexico, and it includes with countries around the world because this is a global challenge. Many of the um, chemical precursors that go into fentanyl are manufactured halfway around the world, uh, then come close to, uh, to us in, in Mexico, fabricated into fentanyl, sent across the border. So we also have to deal with that part of the, the chain. Um, I say all of this because we put together a coalition of countries this summer more than 100 countries now, with uh, Mexico and the United States playing a very important lead role, um, to make sure that we're acting cooperatively and collectively against the challenge of synthetic opioids. This is a challenge that is not simply one for the United States or, or Mexico. We're seeing this spring up around the world. Um, we're seeing uh, Captagon. We're seeing methamphetamines. Uh, we're seeing uh, other synthetic opioids that are wreaking havoc in various parts of the world. And fentanyl itself, while we've been the canary in the coal mine in the United States, we're now seeing fentanyl use uh, and distribution uh, go up in various parts of the world as these criminal cartels are trying to make markets elsewhere because our market tragically has become so saturated. But in terms of what the United States and Mexico are doing together, and Alicia talked about uh, the importance that we, we both attach to this. Um, I think uh, it's very important to note that not only do we have a responsibility on the demand side, we also have a responsibility when it comes to guns that are getting into Mexico and that are helping to fuel uh, the, the violence that goes along uh, with the cartels that are engaged in the drug enterprise and violence more broadly 
Uh, we feel a, a, a deep sense of responsibility. Um, last year, uh, we made it, uh, for the first time, a federal crime to be engaged in the trafficking uh, of, of guns. Uh, that, that's a very important new tool, a new element. Uh, we're working in ever closer collaboration uh, to get at the, uh, the guns before they get into to Mexico and working collaboratively with Mexico law enforcement. Uh, at the same time, uh, we're seeing very important collaboration in Mexico with Mexican authorities on dealing with fentanyl, uh, the fabrication, the labs, et cetera, uh, in, uh, in Mexico. Um, we have dismantled synthetic drug labs. Uh, we pursued criminal networks uh, and their finances. We reduced the uh, amount of illicit firearms, cash, and other illicit goods that are crossing our border. And we strongly support Mexico in its efforts to uh, counter production uh, and trafficking. We're providing assistance on seizing and investigating these clandestine uh, drug labs. We're preventing the diversion of chemical precursors. We're increasing information sharing on synthetic drugs and precursors. We're enhancing security at our ports of entry. Um, it's, it's worth noting that of the um, synthetic opioids of the fentanyl coming into the United States via Mexico, uh, of the uh, fentanyl that we seized, 95% is coming through legal ports of entry. So the efforts that we're making uh, to strengthen even more our capacity to detect and stop uh, this flow, that's a very important element. In it. So it's a very long way of saying this is a matter of shared responsibility for us, shared obligation, shared concern. Uh, but it goes beyond the United States and Mexico. It's a global challenge, a global problem. And our two countries together are now working with as I said, more than 100 other countries uh, to get at it in new and effective ways. Quisiera responderle diciéndole en primer lugar que México no minimiza el problema de la violencia en los estados que usted menciona. El presidente lo ha abordado directamente todos los días, de lunes a viernes. Se sostiene una reunión del Gabinete de Seguridad en donde se analiza con cuidado de 6 a 7 de la mañana todos los días cuáles son los problemas que está enfrentando el país y sobre todo se han analizado y se analizan con cuidado los estados que usted menciona, Zacatecas, Guerrero, Chiapas, y desde luego que estamos course, muy alertas y el presidente López Obrador personalmente junto con el secretario de la Defensa, la secretaria de Seguridad y Protección Ciudadana, el secretario de Marina, la secretaria de Gobernación y la, la Comisión Nacional de Inteligencia abordando este tema todos los días. Sin duda el tráfico de armas es uno de los problemas críticos y efectivamente estamos trabajando con Estados Unidos y le agradezco tanto que estemos hablando de esto como una esto va a llevarnos a que tenemos que ayudarnos y las armas que están entrando this makes it clear that we need to help each other the guns coming to Mexico are about 200,000 guns a what we are doing and this is very important is that the Secretary of Defense and I I hope you'll be able to have a chat with them directly. Un, un they are muy doing a very careful traceability of these uh, guns to see how they are going to que, different eh, states in the country. And if you wish to have this information, we can share it with you. Asistidos, Regarding si assisted reforms, in this adelante, case, Mexico is conducting this kind of assisted reform with Guatemala, Honduras, y, eh, and we are considering programs with Venezuela and Colombia. Seis we have six weekly Guatemala, Honduras, flights in the case El of Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, and Central American countries. And I believe it is very important for the tone, tone of our conversation to be constructive and with evidence at hand. Thank you. Thank you all. Ah, perdón, lo de USAID. A ver. USAID, right, USAID. In USAID really is a U.S. cooperation agency, just as our, we have a Mexican cooperation agency. What we're doing right now is bringing together our efforts to work together in Central America, and that is working out as long as and what we want is to show results in communities that need it. As Secretary Buenrostro said, the main focus of the high-level dialogues, economic, security, drugs, migration, weapons, the goal is to benefit people. Thank you all. Thank you.